It's very nearly impossible to get to this point in the year without becoming a little bit introspective about almost every aspect of your life. And sim racing is not escaping that in terms of, uh, well, where I spent the majority of my free time this year. So I found some interesting things that I thought I'd share with you and uh, the idea of where I spent my time. But I think also more importantly, why I found it worthy to spend my time there. So the first thing that I discovered is that I spent over 350 hours sim racing this year. That's pretty mind-boggling. Um, it doesn't sound like a lot if you think about it in terms of there are 365 days in a year, so that's less than an hour a day for the entire year. But still, that accounts for like you know weekends, um, the travel schedule that I maintain for work, um, and a whole bunch of other obligations and things that I'm involved in. That's a pretty significant chunk of time. And when I looked at how it breaks down, it actually makes a lot of sense. It's you know almost 69% of the time that I spent sim racing this last year was in iRacing. And we'll talk a little bit about how I spent that specific time uh, in a bit, but it, it's not surprising to me because that's where I spend the majority of my sim racing time. What did surprise me was that um, the second most used amount of hours was driving a set of course of competency on it. <laughs> Because, um, A, that hasn't worked on my machine um, uh, consistently throughout this year. I've had a lot of performance issues, uh, wasn't set up quite right. I changed machines. Um, so I was actually surprised to find that I had spent as much time in it as I had. Um, and especially also given that I have talked and feel like I've spent a lot more time in a set of Corsa and Automobilista too um, in, in the most recent um, months that I, I, th I thought that it eclipsed ACC in it, and it hasn't. So I thought that that was quite surprising. Um, I have spent some time in R Factor too as well, um, and that's uh, been, been pretty useful. And I got a Steam Deck um, somewhere around the middle of the year. And that started changing my uh, outlook on life in terms of the SimGate experience. So I thought that that was kind of interesting as well. But driving down into iRacing, the time that I spent iRacing um, this year has been kind of interesting. Um, it's been very focused time. Um, I haven't done a lot of um, uh, open lobby stuff and all of that, but I have I drove three charity events. Um, I participated in five PCA Sim Racing Series 10 events, which isn't a lot um, considering I think it was an eight race series. Um, and uh, so I missed a few races there because I was traveling, etc. cetera. Um, I drove on uh, the North America Racing League Porsche Cup um, with Volker Krebs. He was my partner in that. Um, and we, we did multiple races. He did more than I did. I think I missed three of the events, three or four of the events. So I drove in six of those. Um, Champion Motorsports iRacing Team Endurance Series is something that Rob Cottle and I have done for actually starting 2024 is our fourth year driving in that series. And it's a lot of fun. It's a Team Endurance Series. Um, I drove six races there. Um, and then we participated in um, a record breaking, actually, for Schadenfreude Fodder, um, seven iRacing special events this year. And that's, of course, the Team Endurance Series that we drive in, you know, the, uh, the, the, uh, six, eight, 12, 24 hour races that are scattered throughout the schedule by iRacing. And then of course I, I did do some iRacing official series races, uh, but only 10 um, over the course of the year, which I thought was really, really interesting. So the bulk of my time really was spent practicing, practicing for those team endurance races, practicing for, you know, other other things that are, are coming up on the schedule. And so I thought that that was kind of interesting um, in and of itself is that the iRacing time was was very focused and not as uh, broad as it's been in the past. Why? Why iRacing? I, I always like to um, take a look at why I find things so valuable, and I really do appreciate iRacing's strengths. Um, the open lobby ma matchmaking is, uh, the, the, it's, it's, it's amazing. Um, combining a safety rating um, and a license essentially to dictate what events you can drive in, and then having a, a driver rating that allows similar skilled drivers to be in the same race together so that the competition is high. Um, build into the system and supporting that as part of the native component of the, the whole application, the whole platform is pretty amazing. And it's unique amongst all the other 
um, sim experiences out there. That's why I think if you talk to just about anybody, and I've heard this multiple times now repeated in, in recent uh, conversations, is that while iRacing may not be the best driving simulator out there, it is the best racing simulator because of, of these, these cool, you know, the lobby matchmaking, the robust support for team and league racing, um, those built-ins, again, supporting that within the context in an easy, accessible way, very, very cool capabilities. And then, of course, the high-quality laser scan tracks and what is arguably the best-in-class physics model out there. Not a comprehensive list of their strengths, but definitely interesting. Weaknesses, um, as I talk about weaknesses, you'll notice that one weakness that is not on here is the lack of rain. Why is that? Because although other simulators do support rain um, today and have for a long time, they don't do it the right way. Shh. What do I mean by that? Well, any of you that are fellow Regenmeisters know this to be true, that there is a very, very, very distinct difference between a wet line and a dry line in the rain. Um, if you try to drive the dry line in rain conditions, um, you wind up driving on a rubberized oil mat with water, slick, can't get purchase. It's horrible to drive on the dry line in the wet. So you have to drive the wet line, which is the outside of that, where there isn't rubber laid down, where there isn't oil and water mixing and creating a slick surface. You have to drive an alternate line. No other sim actually supports that. You drive ACC, you drive AC, you drive uh, R-Factor. All of them do the same thing in terms of the wet dry, wet dry line problem is that if you drive the dry line in the wet, you got grip. If you try to drive off the dry line, you lose grip. And that's exactly opposite what actually happens in the wet. So I'm actually really impressed with iRacing because they are looking at the physics and how water pools, how it runs. Um, Sonoma is a really interesting example here is that on the back straightaway, in it's in a downpour rain, you get a river that runs across the track. Modeling that as it dries, as it changes, horribly difficult. Um, iRacing is trying to do the right thing by really supporting wet line, dry line racing, supporting proper runoff, proper pooling, um, that's actually obeying the physics rules, not only in can, as they relate to how the water works and how the water you know relates to the track, but in how the tires respond to that really really great that they're taking their time and making sure that that's working great that's not a weakness of iRacing. racing that's actually a really good sign that the, they know what they're doing and they care that they get it right they do have some bad things though off track penalty system the slowdowns hate those if you go off track the system should be smart enough to tell you if you're gaining time and penalize you if you are gaining time i get that but if you're not going to gain time or you're going to lose time so what you went off track you give you an incident point i'll take that but don't slow me down don't give me a slowdown where i lose two three seconds of my lap time because of that stupid rule ever-changing tire model every update they change the tire model i hate that um you just get used to the tire model start feeling the car and they change it i don't know if that's for balance of performance amongst drivers or if they are trying to continue to improve and perfect that tire model but it's irritating really irritating there's also an inconsistent balance of performance across the cars. Um, I felt for a long time that the newer the car is, if it's in their, new and they're stable, that car's always a little bit faster than the others. And that's not cool, especially when you're talking about endurance racing events where you're trying to perform as best you can. Um, and um, the car that you've chosen maybe isn't the newest and shiniest thing on the block. Um, I loved it when the GT3 R first came out because that car was the bomb. That car was fast faster than everything else and as other things have released it's that balance of performance has not been consistent in terms of keeping the cars even um, and I think that should be easier um, than they make it out to be so problematic a set of course of competition as I said that's the second most um, uh, frequent in sim in my year um, and the reasons why are kind of interesting. I have found that the way in which they build skills um, as you drive through is very engaging. Um, 
almost to the point of, well, it's, it's gamification, right? You want to get better by virtue of increasing your scores and the way that they build it out step by step as you kind of work through and get additional skills and kind of get to that culmination of seeing all of the different um, uh, scoring variables and how they change as part of your score um, is engaging. It's interesting. Um, it's also, they have a very fun to play career mode. Um, you can build your own championships just like you can with iRacing and other simulators, but their career mode um, is really kind of neat. It starts you off in the Lamborghini and you have to go through a training curriculum in the Lamborghini before you can get into a GT3 car. Um, it's just, it's fun um, and very compelling. I find I've lost hours just playing in the career mode. And I got to tell you, amazing sound, probably the best sound of any sim coming out of ACC. I really, really like it. Weaknesses in terms of me, and I think these are mostly personal weaknesses. Um, triple screen setup requires use of external tools. I don't use NVIDIA surround um, to actually manage my three monitors as one big screen. So I manage them independently. And the triple screen setup is a pain in ACC, unless you're using external tools. And even with the external tools, it was a little bit, uh, uh, a little bit challenging. I have found Resize Raccoon life changer. Um, so if you haven't tried that out yet and you're not using NVIDIA Surround and you don't want to for various reasons, that is an amazing tool and can help you with, uh, with ACC and getting it set up uh, for triples. Um, High-end performance, so getting the graphics and Ultra and you know having it really look and feel really amazing as it should on high-end equipment, which I'm lucky enough to have, it required extensive out-of-game tweaking. I had to do all sorts of things, follow all sorts of steps and tuning, stand on my head. Uh, I think I sacrificed a, a, a clown. I, it was horrible, um, but I finally got it working and it works great and I love it, but that shouldn't be that hard, um, especially because it isn't that hard with a lot of the other Sims that are just as impressive, um, if not more so in some contexts. Um, HUD placement, team driving, lobby matchmaking, painfully inflexible, or not built directly into the sim, and that's problematic as well. So not a great sim in those respects. Um, and those are probably the biggest weaknesses that I have personally found. There are probably countless others. I don't have no one to berate these. I'm just trying to highlight why I spent time in them and why I didn't spend as much time in them. Assetto Corsa, um, uh, you know, I showed you the... Uh, uh, the Tokyo freeway system um, in the free roam. Um, it is the only sim with extensive free roam support. And I think that that's unique. That's really kind of cool. Uh, well, I say only sim. Um, Beam NG uh, probably has some free roam support that I have yet e explored. I haven't played around with that sim yet. Um, shame on me, I know. I just haven't had the time. But um, that free roam support, being able to drive a freeway and have regular traffic, uh, LA canyons, Pacific Coast Highway. There are countless other free roam support. They're not tracks, they're just environments in which you can drive and have a good time. Um, very chill, very relaxing, a lot of fun, um, and I like that. Excellent force feedback feel. Love the way AC feels um, when driving. Um, I also find it, um, it's a very Linux, like if, if you know operating systems, you know technology, you'll understand what I mean. Um, it's extremely extensible, very modular. Um, it supports various niche communities to do very specific things within it. And that's a huge strength, but it's also a weakness. Um, the reason why it's a weakness is it becomes so fractured and so spread out and it becomes very difficult to have two same systems completely and identically configured the same way um and that's problematic um so it's 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 one of those things it's a strength and a weakness and that it supports so much interesting stuff and you know in terms of you know changing the way the, the platform looks and feels and drives the cars the tracks and all of that different stuff but it's can become a mess a hodgepodge after a while Lobby matchmaking, team driving, not built directly in the sim. You have to rely on third parties like Wolf Fuel Motorsports that are supporting kind of the same things that iRacing does with a safety rating and a driver rating to um, create those uh, matchmaking opportunities for like-minded drivers. Um, and it's not built in, so that's a problem. Um, it's a problem that's getting rectified by Wolf Fuel Motorsports, but it's still, it's a limitation in the sim. There's also a wild variation in the quality of track and car models, and that be can become really infuriating um, when you're trying to put together some 
competition and series and things of that nature. Um, and you find inconsistencies and the quality of stuff as you're trying to build that out. AMS2, um, probably one of the coolest graphics and sound uh, implementations of a sim without being overly taxing on hardware that I've ever seen. Um, I really enjoy it. Um, it's also got some really cool historic race cars and tracks, either built in or supported by DLC. Um, and it's also, um, this is also true for ACC and AC, playable without a dedicated sim rig or dedicated wheel pedals or by console or on a Steam Deck, um, which is cool. Um, th this is a, a both a blessing and a curse, I guess. It's hard to play a real simulator, um, one that's got complexity in terms of feel, if you can't feel it, right? And, and with controllers and with a Steam Deck, you can't really feel it like you can in a real rig. The fact that it's supported is interesting. Um, it's br trying to bridge that gap between Simcade and Simulator um, in a unique way, and it can be useful. Um, but uh, I consider it to be a strength in this context, but it's also, it can be a liability as well. Um, missing online matchmaking team driving support and that is something that is promised down the road as they continue to develop the platform it's still very much an in progress development stream um direct drive wheelbase uh, initial configuration was an absolute nightmare for me and i'm on a semi cube pro uh, 2 pro um and it's pretty standard you know wheelbase right um and it was painful. It just, it wasn't very intuitive. It was um, very hit and miss. I accidentally stumbled into the configuration and got it working and have no idea if I could replicate it. Um, in fact, I've tried to replicate it. I got it working before and I had to stumble into it again. It's, it's just horrible experience. And overall, something's still missing and I can't quite put my finger on it. I don't know if it's too much Simcade. Um, so when I drive it, it's a little too pointy and a little too odd. Um, but it's something that's, there's still something not right with it. And, and I know that's true because I get really excited when new updates come out and I load it up and I start playing it and I drive it and I'm really excited for about a week or maybe two. And then I move on to other things and back to iRacing or back to, to other things that I'm you know more passionate about. And then I don't pick it up again until something exciting happens again in the development. So there's still something missing. It's not holding my attention. I don't know if that's uh, um, user base or um, the, the, the core components of what I need to do online racing with real people. R Factor 2, I will admit, I absolutely hate personally. Um, I will admit that they have an amazing tire model. They've invested a lot in making sure that the tires behave um, as they do in real life or close to it um, across all aspects of the tire life cycle. Um, you know, when they're cold, when they're hot, when you abuse them, when you flat spot them, all of that stuff is modeled in to be extremely cool. Um, R Factor 2 is also um, like iRacing, uses laser scan tracks. Only two simulators that I know for sure do that um, exclusively um, for their, their track content. Um, they do support multiplayer support, although the matchmaking, again, requires third-party support. Again, Low Fuel Motorsports is doing that for ACC, for R-Factor 2, and now for AC, which is really nice. Weaknesses in R-Factor 2, horribly fiddly to get set up correctly. Um, getting it to feel right and drive right. Um, once you do, it's amazing, but it just takes a long uphill ice skate to get there, and that's not very fun. Visually and auditorially, I find the R Factor 2 to be really uncompelling. I don't enjoy it. I don't like the way it looks. I don't like the way it sounds. It's It feels old. Um, and it is aging. Um, it's changed hands a few times. Um, the people that have it now, um, we'll leave it at that. Um, I, I don't want to cast dispersions, but I don't feel it's in the greatest hands right now. Um, and I think that that's evidenced most directly by the fact that recent content is not of an of a consistent quality and that's problematic right you want things to come out and be consistent in terms of quality and and it's little things and it seems trivial but like um the dashboards of the cars not behaving quite the way they should or things breaking um and the the car model um tracks not quite looking right in certain contexts and just not not good and that's a problem right you want the things to be of higher quality especially if you're paying money for them and for r factor 2 
like iRacing, you do have to buy tracks and cars um, through DLC or through their store. Their actual store um, is how they sell their content. It's hard to look at my other category, the uh, the 5.4, I think, percent of uh, um, my, my time spent in the things that include Simcade. Um, hard to compare those things apples to apples with the racing and driving simulators that um, are also on this list. So in terms of strengths and weaknesses, it doesn't really apply in terms of comparison. And so that's not why I use them. Um, sometimes it's just nice to have something that's fun to play and when i say play i mean exactly that is it's you know you're not taking it too seriously you're just jumping in goofing off for a little while and having a good laugh um and you know there are you know some things that are just easier to do with that than others um and you you want something that's easy to pick up put down as you know need allows or time allows so if you're waiting for, you know, somebody that's, you know, um, at the doctor's office or um, you have some free time between meetings or, you know, whatever, um, you can stop in the middle of it and pick it right back up when you have the next available time slot. Um, and you can't do that with simulators as much. You're in it for the time that it takes to run a race or to run a practice effectively. And, you know, if you don't put that time in, you wind up either losing money or, you know, having to start over. And that's not cool, right? Um, you want something that's easy to pick up and put down sometimes and have fun. Um, for me, portability is also really important here. Um, I travel a lot, so um, being able to take my gaming with me, it's hard to pack up this rig. This rig is huge. Um, it was hard to move from one house to another with a truck. Um, so um, the idea of traveling, um, very, very important. So I, you know, like I said, mid-year, I picked up a Steam Deck and it's been fun to be able to get my racing fix in my hand um, while on the go. And um, you can't do that with most of the pure simulators. Again, ACC, AC, Automobile Institute, all are supported on the Steam Deck to some level to where they're playable or close to playable. Um, but that's not really what I'm talking about either um, in terms of Simcade. I'm talking about things like, you know, um, Grid or um, my favorite, Wreckfest. Um, just something that's a goof. It's fun. It's very arcadey like, but it's got a little bit of aspects of, you know, driving that you can kind of remind yourself of, you know, how to brake, how to accelerate, etc. You don't have the same feel you have in an actual sim rig, but it's, it's still there and still fun. So that's how I spent my year and that's why I spent it on the things that I spent it on. Um, I hope that you found this entertaining or useful or maybe a combination of the both or maybe you just like it when I publish new videos. Um, <laughs> if that's the case, please do click on the like and let me know in the comments uh, what you're thinking and uh, your, your level of appreciation. But at the very least, I want to thank you for giving me your attention today. And I want to wish you a very, very happy new year. I hope 2024 does its best to bring you everything, every happiness um, that you desire both on and off the track. And I look forward to starting out with some new series of content in 2024. Thank you. Spaß machen Rennsport.